Okay, normally we talk about prepping for Dungeons & Dragons, and the majority, um, of course right now, all of the games that I run are virtual tabletop games. But, uh, what happens when you're running a game IRL? Uh, sometimes people ask me, do I use miniatures? Do I use painted miniatures? Do I paint miniatures myself? Uh, the answer is... Uh, yes, I do use miniatures when I run IRL games, and more often than not, I do paint the miniatures myself. So, I'm by no means uh, a great miniature painter, uh, but ever since I was a kid, uh, I did want to learn to paint miniatures, and I spent a couple of years um, really grinding it out, trying to learn techniques, trying to befriend uh, professional miniature painters and find out what they had to say. Um, I worked uh, at conventions uh, for a couple of years, uh, demoing games and things like that. And during that time, I uh, took a lot of classes. Uh, they actually have painting classes at some, uh, some of the conventions that you could sign up for and learn from professionals, their different techniques and whatnot. So um, I know a, a fair bit about painting miniatures, and uh, even though I wouldn't say that any of my stuff is, you know, incredible or anything, um, it's it's passable. Uh, it's what we would call tabletop quality, right? I'm not going to enter uh, a contest to win any prizes or anything, but uh, it does the job on the table. So I thought that I would make this video, that way the next time somebody asks me what I know about painting miniatures and getting started painting miniatures, I could sort of point them in the right direction and get them started on that. So, um, let's, let's begin. Let's begin. All right. Uh, you want to learn how to paint miniatures. You've never painted miniatures before in your entire life. Uh, what should you do to get started? Um, I would say that this Army Painter uh, War Paints hobby set from uh, from Army Painter probably has everything that you're going to need to start painting miniatures. Uh, it's like 72 bucks right now on Amazon with Prime shipping. I don't know how that affects international users uh, or viewers, but um, US, Amazon, 72 bucks to get started. If $72 seems like a lot of money, you may want to reconsider whether or not you want to paint miniatures as a hobby. Uh, painting miniatures as a hobby is an expensive hobby. Uh, painting miniatures is an expensive hobby. Uh, there are people who will tell you it doesn't have to be expensive. You you buy you know discount brand paints from the dollar store. I think they're called like Apple Apple Barrel paints or something. They're like forty nine cents a, a bottle. Uh, you get standard you know off brand primer for three fifty a can. Um, yes, yes, you could go the cheap route, cheap brushes, cheap paints, uh, cheap primer. Um, you might find yourself frustrated with the results that you get, uh, and then be turned off of the hobby. You might love, uh, what you're doing and not worry about it. I have tried the, the, the cheaper route and I have used cheaper paints on larger models, like models that are very big, like the size of a cat, like that, that size, uh, because yeah, the paint's really expensive. You don't want to be using super expensive miniature paint on a, on a huge miniature. Um, but I'm going to say that if that's the route you're going to take, uh, just go over to the local craft store, buy some paints, buy some cheap primer, buy some cheap brushes and get going. Uh, what this kit is going to do for you, and I'll provide links to every site that we visit during this video. Uh, what this kit does for you is it gives you all the tools that you're going to need to get started. You got your snips uh, in case you've got miniatures that come on sprues. Uh, sprues are basically uh, pieces of plastic uh, that have the different parts of the miniature attached to them and you have to snip them free and then assemble the miniatures. Some miniatures do come unassembled. Uh, the snips are also useful for trying to get bits of uh, plastic or metal off of your miniature, uh, as is a good X-Acto knife, which it doesn't look like this kit comes with. It does come with a file, which is going to be useful uh, for filing off those edges. And when I say uh, rough edges, uh, let's see if any of these guys have one that I didn't clean off. I'm really bad about cleaning the, uh, the edges of miniatures. Uh, there you go. Uh, you see there's a seam uh, along this guy's torso and belly. 
Uh, that could have been cleaned up with a knife. Uh, you could see that there's seams uh, here and there. That's where the plastic that's been injected into the mold uh, kind of oozes out of the mold a little bit. It, it leaves a seam behind. Uh, a lot of people like to go in and clean those up with uh, files and X-Acto knives. All right. Uh, this also comes with three different brushes. Uh, a relatively big brush uh, that, that you're going to use to get your um, colors around. A smaller brush for details. And a big, fat, flat brush that you're going to use for dry brushing. So it does kind of cover the three types of brushes that you're going to want, which is pretty cool. Uh, it includes some super glue, which is, you know, whatever. Um, if you are assembling miniatures that are different pieces, you're going to need that. It gives you a little palette for mixing which, I mean, is kind of cool. And then it does come with um, all the primary colors, uh, some metals, uh, a wash, and a primer. Uh, so all that is pretty cool. Um, that will That's everything you need to get started painting miniatures would be included in this kit. Uh, you will have to, of course, use this mixing tray to mix all the more advanced colors that you want. Uh, but it does try to cover, you know, most of the basics here. And Army Painter does make some really quality metallic paints. Uh, of all the different brands, I do feel that their metallics are some of the best metallic paints that you could buy. Their other paints are passably good. Um, I'm not going to say that these are the best paints uh, for your money. But overall, this is a very complete kit. And uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would recommend something similar to this. Now, if you wanted to go piecemeal uh, and sort of assemble the kit yourself, you certainly could. Uh, additionally, if you wanted to be able to base your miniature, that is to say, make your miniature base a little bit more interesting than a uh, flat circle, uh, they do have this kit right here uh, that includes um, different types of terrain uh, elements so that you could add grass or dirt or tufts of grass to your, uh, to your scene. And it does come with some special glue for that that is um, a little bit different than super glue. Um, so it's not going to cause any weird um, discoloration of your miniatures and painting and all that jazz. Um, honestly, when you're basing, you could just use like Elmer's glue, um, but uh, you know it, it might peel easily. So uh, a glue like this, uh, basing glue, can be very useful um, for keeping all of your terrain elements on your base. All right. Um, here is another starter kit from Reaper. Um, I feel like Reaper's paints are a bit higher quality than uh, Army Painter and roughly the same price. Uh, Reaper also makes uh, a line of miniatures called Bones Miniatures. So, um, yeah, worth checking out. Their How to Paint kit uh, comes with three miniatures. Um, let's see, two brushes, a dry brush and a detail brush. Uh, Eleven paints and a, a little guidebook to sort of help guide you through the process. Uh, the cool thing about Bones miniatures is they are made of a squishy, flexible plastic. So they are highly unlikely to break if you drop them or if they get uh, you know, stepped on or, or something like that. Um, and they don't require any priming. Uh, you just give them a quick you know, wash, a uh, little soap and water wash, let them dry, and they are ready for paint. Uh, a lot of people will tell you you have to prime uh, Bones miniatures. You do not have to prime uh, Bones miniatures. You can just paint right onto the miniature. So that is kind of a cool thing about it. Um, they've got some pretty cool um, colors here, very similar to the last set, uh, trying to color all those basics. You will have to do some mixing and matching. Uh, this kit is half the price of the one I showed you and also um, has almost all the same things. It's just missing the snips and the file, uh, but that can be covered very easily with this 899 kit right here uh, that comes with X-Acto knife, files, tweezers, very useful when you're putting together uh, very tiny, tiny bits, uh, and of course, snips. So while this first one is great and has sort of an all-in-one feel to it, uh, this Reaper set is half the price, comes with three minis, and you can then supplement the tools that you need uh, for like $9 more. So again, all the links are going to be in the description of the video. Now, something that people don't think about is uh, lighting. 
you do want to have some good lighting when you're going to paint, uh, or you're going to hurt those little eyeballs. You're going to hurt those little eyeballs. Um, I don't go all in. I don't have like the, 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 the awesome headset with like the magnifiers that like swoop down so I can like see every possible detail of the miniature. Um, but I do make sure that I have a good light uh, where I'm trying to work. Uh, so this light right here, it's like 35 bucks. There are smaller and larger versions of it, but basically if you could get yourself a nice bright uh, LED lamp like this, it is going to make the whole process so much more enjoyable. Um, I believe this one right here does have a magnifier included. Uh, so as you can see, this guy, you know, he's looking at his medicine, but picture yourself as this old man and you're, and you're painting your miniature and now you're looking through a magnifying glass and it's well lit at the same time. So this magnifying LED lamp is awesome. Um, if you don't need the magnifier, uh, you can always just go and get some bright LED lamps and set them up in your work area. But you definitely, definitely, definitely want to have good lighting uh, when you go to paint. Trust me. All right. Um, so those are the different ways that you could kind of buy stuff to get started. Let's talk about the different types of paint in general. Uh, we've got Army Painter. Uh, they are dropper paints, so what that means is they come in uh, little bottles, and you squeeze the bottles, and paint comes out. Uh, that's really good. You are going to want to keep uh, a paper clip nearby, uh, and then you're going to unbend the paper clip, and you're going to use the little metal from the paper clip to clear um, the hole at the top of the bottle, because inevitably it will get clogged with dry paint, and you're going to need to unclog it to... Uh, get started. So they have a pretty amazing line of colors. Uh, what I don't like about their uh, their paint is that I don't feel like the saturation levels of the color are very good. It takes a lot of coats of paint to get the results that you want. Um, so they're good for when you're first starting out and learning because you're going to want to be you know painting a lot to kind of build that skill. Uh, but if you're in a big hurry to get miniatures painted, uh, just you trying to go for quantity over quality, um, I don't know. Um, there are better types of paint out there. Uh, the big exception to this is their metallic paints. I feel that their metallic paints are the absolute best metallic paints that you could get. Now, there are techniques called non-metal metallics where you basically create the effect of metal without using metallic paints. I'm nowhere near that skill level, so I lean heavy on their uh, the Army Painters variety of metal paints. I think their metal paint line is fantastic. So um, even if you go with a different brand for your paints, um, I would definitely recommend giving the Army Painter Metallics a try because they're really, really good. Uh, Reaper Paints. Uh, this was like the last brand of paint that I tried when I was trying all the different types of paints. I was very impressed with them. Um, almost all of them in the line uh, have a really good flow and they have a really good um, saturation. Uh, you will, of course, have to do several coats of paint, uh, but not nearly as much as you would uh, normally with the, uh, say, craft store you know, discount paints or the army painter paints. So these guys have a much better uh, saturation level on the colors and, and all that. So I'm a big fan of these. I also like the fact that they are dropper based paints. Uh, again, you're going to want to keep that paper clip handy to clean the nozzle of the dropper out to make sure that you can, um, you know, keep the paint flowing. All right. Uh, another type of dropper paint is from Vallejo. Uh, Vallejo is, uh, oof. they are like one step above or maybe even two steps above Reaper paints. Um, all of their paints are, are very, very high quality. Um, they can be a little bit hard to find, depending on your area. Uh, but, man, do they make some really, really high quality paints. Um, and their brighter colors, like they have a fluorescent line, uh, are just gorgeous. Uh, they also make a lot of great paint for airbrushing. We'll talk about airbrushing at the very end of the, of the video. All right, so those are dropper paints. The other type of paint is um, pot paints, right? So because they come in a little pot. Um, Citadel, guys that make Warhammer, uh, they they make paints, obviously. And their paints all come in pots, for better or for worse. Uh, look at this picture right here of this person 
uh, and they're painting and they got this pot of paint here. Boy, it looks really good, right? Because the paint just kind of hangs out in the cap and you just dip in there and you get it. Man, I'm going to tell you, pot paints are a dangerous life. Uh, you will knock these pots of paint over. These pots of paint are expensive. You will cry a lot when you spill the paint. Uh, you can also see just in this picture here that, uh, let me zoom in some more, that uh, we're already looking at um, some like paint drying in the cap and all that kind of stuff. Uh, also, if you paint like this with the lid open, the paint is going to slowly dry out. Um, if you wander off or have too many pots open at once, you might forget that the lid is open, which is a whole thing. So, um, pot paints are a lot of work. Uh, it is like, uh, get it, yeah, you gotta make sure that you are paying attention, you're not knocking things over, you're not leaving the lids off, uh, you gotta make sure that you're, you're keeping them well, uh, well shook so that they don't clump up at the bottom. Um, I will say this, there's a lot of people out there who say, you don't need Citadel paints, pots are terrible, uh, Warhammer's terrible, Citadel's greedy, blah, 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 blah. The guys make fantastic paint. Uh, this is a thick paint. Uh, you will need to water it down uh, when you use it. It is almost like you're getting like raw pigment, and then you add water to create the consistency of paint that you need. Uh, these paints are very, very good paints. Uh, they do take a bit of learning, a little bit of a learning curve to figure them out. But man, they are some really good paints. Uh, they are price. They are price. And like I said, the pot design uh, does lead to some heartbreak if you were to knock it over or leave the caps off. Now, within uh, Citadel's pot uh, range, they do have a number of different types of paint. So the, uh, there is something called base paints. These paints are unbelievably bright, unbelievably saturated. When you paint with these, you might, e you might only need like one coat of base. That is how strong the pigments are in their base coats. Uh, then you would move on to layer paints, which are thinner and you can kind of see through them a little bit. So you add like gradients and you build up in that way. And then uh, you can also go for their dry line of paints. These are paints that have deliberately had a lot of the moisture taken out so that they are easier to use with dry brushing. Dry brushing is a technique that allows you to do stuff like this, right? This is just a black uh, miniature. Like I, I just sprayed black primer and then I took a dry brush with bone paint and I just dry brushed it, um, which you'll have to learn what dry brushing is, but I'm not gonna cover that in this video. But suffice to say that having paints that are specifically designed for dry brushing does make dry brushing a heck of a lot easier. Uh, they also offer a line of shades. Uh, shades are fantastic for cheating, um, shading on your miniature. Uh, you should definitely look into shades if you plan to just paint casually and quickly uh, because they can speed up the process tremendously. Uh, speaking of speeding up the process, uh, they do have a line of paints called contrast paints. Uh, they are basically a evolution of the shade paints. And rather than just provide shading, they also provide painting at the same time. So they, uh, it's a whole different technique of painting, but man, it can save you a lot, a lot of time. And you could just crank out the minis once you kind of get that. Uh, down. So if you're looking to paint things quickly um, for tabletop quality, uh, you might want to look into tutorials and uh, things related to contrast paints because they are pretty damn cool. Uh, they also have a line of technical paints. This includes uh, blood uh, for the blood god, obviously, um, and different things that can sort of manipulate uh, how things look. So these paints will um, simulate special effects. So drying mud, uh, rust, uh, like weird speckles of dirt. Um, it, it does all sorts of neat stuff. This particular one in the picture, Soulstone Blue, it has glitter in it. Um, so it has sort of a glossy glitter effect in addition to being blue. So these are sort of the fancy pants paints. Now, there is another uh, type of pot paint, uh, and that is uh, P3 paints, I believe they're called. Uh, and they are from uh, War Machine. So let me grab those for you. 
Uh, Privateer Press is the one that makes these. There we go. And these paints are very interesting because they stay wet for a really long time. Uh, they stay wet for a really long time. They, uh, they come in pots. Um, their colors are strong. Their metallics, not so much. Um, and they have all the same problems that pot paints have. You can knock them over. You could leave the lids off. They're prone to dry out faster than dropper paints. But um, what's cool about the P3 line of paints is that because they stay wet so long, you can do a lot of what's called wet blending. So you start with one color, then you switch to another color on the miniature, and you can sort of uh, mix those colors on the miniature. It's, it's very, very interesting and fun way to paint. Uh, but because of the nature of these paints, uh, they kind of work better with themselves as opposed to mixing and matching with the other types of paint. All right, so those are different types of paints. Uh, again, if you're starting out um, and you're, you're unsure about it, you may just want to go with the either the Army Painter Starter Kit or the Reaper Starter Kit and then kind of go from there. Uh, what about miniatures themselves? Uh, what do we do about the miniatures themselves? We want to have miniatures to paint. Uh, what are we going to do? Well, if you have miniatures, before you put paint on the miniatures, you're going to want to make sure that those miniatures are primed. Um, I'm going to link to this. It's a top 10 primers for plastic and metal miniatures article. It's very, very informative. We're not going to talk about all 10, but we will hit some of them. Uh, Games Workshop, again, they make some high quality stuff, but it's very expensive. Uh, never pay $33 for this. Please, please, please don't pay $33 for this. Um, I think in, the, in a game store, you could pick this up for like $15 a can. It's very expensive, even at $15 a can. Right now, we're in a pandemic, so a lot of things cost more than they should because people are trapped at home, and they figure I might as well paint my whole army. Um, this is a really high-quality primer. It will cling to the miniature uh, and just hug all the details there and get a really nice coat on there. Uh, but again, very pricey. Uh, also comes in this lovely gray color. Um, I mean, it's if you can afford it and find it, it's really good, but you don't necessarily have to use it. You could just use Krylon Color Master Primer. Uh, this is probably about, what, $3.50 a can out in, the, out in the wild. You go to a hardware store. Um, this will do the job. It comes in gray, black, and white. Um, and... I mean, it's it's enough. It's enough to do the job, especially when you're first starting out. Um, so I I would say that you know if you find Krylon Color Master Primer out in the wild, uh, give it a shot. It is it is some good stuff. Uh, you can also look into uh, liquid primer. Uh, some liquid primer primer comes with the Army Painter kit. Uh, this is primer that you paint onto the miniature instead of spraying onto the miniature. And I guess it goes without saying, if you're using a spray, prim uh, a spray primer, please do so in a well-ventilated area. I don't need anybody getting like super high and killing their brain cells because they didn't realize that spraying aerosol in a confined space was bad. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you live in an apartment or you don't really have a good area to spray primer, uh, or you live in an area with terrible weather and you'd have to do it outside, uh, spray primer is highly susceptible to uh, humidity and the elements. If you don't have, uh, if you have too much humidity or it's too hot or it's too cold, spraying uh, spray primer uh, will break your heart because you're going to get all sorts of weird um, bumps and wrinkles and all sorts of stuff on the primer. Uh, if you're in an area like that or in a situation like that, I would recommend looking into a paint on primer. Uh, you can just do that in the comfort of your own home, at your art table, or wherever it is you're prepping your miniatures. Uh, so that is sort of the other option if you don't want to do spray primer, is to find a nice paint-on primer. And if you have uh, managed to get a hold of some old-school lead miniatures or, or heavy-duty metal miniatures, uh, you will want to look at possibly this Rust-Oleum uh, Rusty Metal Primer. Uh, this is this is hardcore stuff. Uh, it could be hard to find a primer that will stick to metal miniatures, uh, but this Rust-Oleum stuff uh, will do the job. So that's primers for you. 
All right, what about miniatures themselves? Well, we already mentioned that Bones miniatures don't require primers, so they are ideal for a starting uh, painter. Uh, pick up a bunch of Bones miniatures, and you could skip the priming stage altogether. Uh, or WizKids make this, makes a line of miniatures called uh, Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures. All of these uh, come pre-cleaned, pre-washed, and pre-primed. So you just crack these guys out of their little uh, blister packs or whatever, and you can immediately start throwing paint down on them. Uh, this line has been out for several years now and has so much variety. These are very nice miniatures, and the fact that they already have the mold lines cleaned off, uh, the seams, the mold lines, uh, they have uh, bases already attached in many cases, or they come with bases uh, so that you could just, you know, finish the miniature and attach it. Um... I mean, it's good stuff. And the fact that it, again, is already cleaned and uh, primed for you means you could just open up the package and start painting on them. Fantastic. Uh, if you need more miniatures or you're trying to get miniatures in bulk, uh, if you play the Dungeons & Dragons, I would recommend going to your uh, local Amazon.com and searching for Dungeons & Dragons board games. Uh, these board games uh, were made during the 4th edition era. They used 4th edition rules. And for the most part, you can pick them up pretty cheap. And they come with a lot of miniatures. So if we were to look at the Castle Ravenloft, and you're running Curse of Strahd or whatever, uh, you will get a Strahd miniature. Uh, you will get a Draco Lich miniature, which is the one I showed you guys earlier. This guy right here. Uh, came with that set. I'm pretty sure it came with the set. Uh, there is a zombie miniature uh, that comes with this, uh, or a bunch of zombies. There's skeletons. Um, it's a really nice set, and I think in the end, uh, it ends up being like a dollar a miniature, or or somewhere in that price range. Um, and you also get, uh, I think, a D20, and some hero miniatures, and some dungeon tiles come with this as well. So if you are trying to get some dungeon tiles. And the cool thing about it is I think there's four or five games in this series. And they're all modular and they could all work with each other. Um, so it does cover a lot of the bases. Uh, this one right here. Um, a Shardalon. Wrath of a Shardalon comes with a huge red dragon miniature. Uh, it looks fantastic. So um, these, these are a great way to pick up miniatures and dungeon tiles at the same time that you can then practice painting on. Uh, so, so definitely check those out as well. Uh, you can also hit up eBay and look for uh, unpainted miniature lot. Uh, make sure you use the word lot. Uh, and then that will you know, be people who have a bunch of miniatures they want to get rid of. Um, but always look out for games that have miniatures that you could just cannibalize for miniatures. Uh, because that is honestly the fastest way to build up your miniature collection is to just buy some fantasy themed board games and then just steal all the miniatures out of them. All right. Um, let's see. How, how do you finish up the miniature? So you've put the primer on. You've painted the miniature. Do you think you're done yet? You're still not done yet. You need to put varnish on the miniature at the end. You need to put one, two, or maybe even three coats of varnish on the miniature at the end. Why? Because people are going to be touching those miniatures. They're going to be using those miniatures. And human beings secrete an oil uh, from their body, and their fingers are no exception. That oil will eventually cause the paint on your miniatures to start peeling off. Uh, it will mess up your miniatures over time. Uh, also, you will have players who are childlike in nature, and they will take the miniatures and pretend that they are action figures, and they will smash those miniatures together, uh, making them fight each other. Um, when they do, that will chip the paint. Uh, so putting a varnish on there definitely helps. Now, there are many types of varnish that you could use, uh, and it, it's the same as primer. If you can do a spray varnish, the best spray varnish that exists in the entire world is Tester's Dull Coat. Clear coat, transparent. I understand that this is apparently hard to get outside of America, uh, but man, I am telling you what, this stuff is amazing. Um, you could pick it up pretty cheap from your local craft store if they carry it. I'll often wait for there to be like a 40% off coupon and I'll pick it up from Michael's uh, on the cheap. But man, this Tester's Dull Coat, 
I swear by this stuff. This is an amazing spray varnish. If you're in a situation where you can't do a spray varnish, uh, any sort of dull varnish, uh, paint on dull varnish is going to do the job. You just have to be very careful applying it that it goes on evenly and you don't let it clump anywhere because then it's going to have big clumpy goopy looking bits on it and that is uh, terrible to work so hard and then have that happen. How did I learn how to paint miniatures? Uh, this man right here, uh, Sarasto. Okay, Sarasto's painting. Dude's got 109k uh, subscribers uh, for a reason. He is an absolute champion of miniature painting. And more so than that, he is a champion of teaching other people how to paint miniatures. Uh, this guy taught me things about color theory and how colors interact uh, that I... I had no idea. I felt like a wizard when I, I followed some of his instructions and saw the results. Uh, this guy is absolutely phenomenal. If you want to learn to paint, uh, get your supplies together and then check out this guy's channel because he will teach you to be a great painter. Um, he is that good. It's fantastic. All right, finally, before we close, what is, uh, what's the deal with airbrushing? All right, so airbrushing... Uh, is basically a technique where you use a legit airbrush to not only prime your minis, uh, which saves a, so much time, um, but there's special techniques for priming uh, where you can basically create shading uh, before you ever even apply the paint. Now, you could duplicate this with other types of uh, priming techniques, but airbrush definitely makes it easier. Uh, and then airbrushing has so many benefits in that if you're painting a huge army or you're painting a bunch of miniatures, airbrushing is going to speed that process up tremendously once you learn those techniques. Uh, and airbrushing um, is great for big miniatures. Like I mentioned earlier that I have some miniatures that are like the size of house cats. Uh, I have painted those with a brush and it takes forever. Uh, I probably should have invested in a good airbrush uh, setup and just use an airbrush to do it. I learned to use an airbrush and I understand the benefits of it, but I personally um, never really have the time to kind of sit down and get it set up, make sure everything's working. Uh, airbrushing is a whole nother school of painting and it's a whole nother rabbit hole that you'd have to go down. But I did want to mention it at the very end of the video to let you know that uh, airbrushing is a legitimate technique for painting miniatures. Uh, and you can get a lot of mileage out of airbrushing. Uh, there are people I know who only airbrush uh, paint miniatures uh, using a detail brush for only the finest details at the end, and their work is amazing. Oh, all right, I know this was a lot to take in in one video, and it's run like 33 minutes, but I feel like it covers everything that I know about getting started with painting, and hopefully there's some useful information in here for you. Um, if you decide to pursue this hobby, I wish you the best of luck, and I hope that you find uh, sort of the same zen meditative uh, state that I manage to find myself in when I'm painting. It is a super relaxing hobby. You throw on a show in the background or a uh, audiobook, and you just sort of vibe with the paint and the miniature, and it's so zen and so relaxing. Um, and you have beautiful miniatures that you could throw on the table uh, to uh, enhance your game.